Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning and welcome to a new week. You know, God did not promise us that there will be no fire, there will be no problems, there will be no challenges. He didn't promise that. What God did promise is that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. That promise is in Isaiah 43 verse 2. I just read it from the New International Version. I want us to pray and declare this over our lives. Thank you, Lord, for today. Father, in accordance to your promise, Lord, I speak over your people that as they go about this week, Lord, that the rivers will not sweep over them, Lord, that the challenges of life will not swallow them, Lord, that the fires they face this week will not burn them up, Lord, that you will be strong on their behalf. In the name of Jesus, amen. You know, every man has a will. Every angel has a will. Even every animal that God has created they all have a will. In other words, God gave the power of choice to every creature because your will is where the power of choice or your decision-making process is. It is in your will. And you see, that will that you have been given can be your greatest asset, but it can also be your greatest undoing. It can bring you the greatest blessing in life and it can also bring you the greatest destruction. You're wondering how come something can bring you so much good and so much bad. You know, it's because that thing called the will is that area that God chooses not to exercise his sovereignty over. God allowed man, or any other person who has a will, both man, angels, whoever, God allowed them to have the free will to exercise that will the way they want. God does not interfere with the will of a man. Whatever you choose to do, whatever you decide to do, however you position your will, that is exactly what God will respect. Well, how do I know? It's in the scripture. I'm not guessing. Second Peter 3, 9, the Bible tells us, I read it from the NIV version. It says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So it is clear here that God does not want anyone to perish. King James puts it this way. He said, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So this is the will of God. God does not want anybody to perish. God does not will anybody to perish. But guess what? A lot of people are perishing. Now, if God will force your will, if God will interfere with your will, simple, what he would have done is since he does not want anybody to perish, he would have forced everybody to follow him. He would have forced everybody to repent. But you see, even though God desires that all people repent, he allows you to make the choice. He allows you to exercise the right to decide what you want to do. So typically, what God will do at best is to try to influence your will. He will try to stir up your heart. He will try to make you see things in this way. He will try to bring things in front of you and all of that. He will try to suggest things to you, but he will never interfere with your will. All of that is entirely up to you. So what does God want you to do with your will? God wants you to surrender your will willingly to him. God wants you to give him absolute control, you know, by deliberately saying, I choose to do what God wants me to do. And how do you surrender? Simple. You surrender to the word of God, irrespective of what you think irrespective of how you feel this is how you surrender your will to god you surrender it to his word as long as you see something in the word of god you do it it doesn't matter how you feel it doesn't matter what you think you know how people get up and say oh i'm going to divorce my husband i'm going to divorce my wife what's your reason my reason is because i just don't love my husband anymore i just don't love my wife anymore you see when you are doing that what you are saying is that 
you have decided to go against the will of God. You have chosen to do something different from God. You know, just like someone decides to lie or to commit fornication or to live in pride or to live in bitterness, anger, offense, refuse to forgive somebody. Somebody has offended you. We recognize that somebody has offended you. You just say, you know this person, I will never forgive this person. And you know, when you make those choices, you have made a choice not to surrender your will to God. What you have decided to do is to surrender your will to your own ways. You have chosen not to allow your will to be redeemed. You have chosen not to allow your will to be saved. What is the danger of an unsaved will? What is the danger of a will that is not redeemed? You can see that in Isaiah 14, the very first sin was committed because the person's will was not submitted to God. And that thing brought him down. His name is Lucifer. He used to worship God. He was an angel. He was beautiful. The Bible tells us that, you know, all the musical instruments were in him. The Bible tells us he was wise. You know, he was greatly favored and he was there in heaven doing what he was supposed to do. But then that will came into place and he chose to make decisions against the ways of God. He chose to make decisions against the word of God, the things that God has said. He made a choice. If I read Isaiah 14 verse 13 to 15, I'll read it from the NIV version. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly on the utmost heights of the mount of Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the cloud. I will make myself like the most high. Verse 15 says, but you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. How did this wonderful angel become a terrible devil? It is just how he exercised his will. And the Bible says, though he was exalted, he was now brought down to the realm of the dead. The dead. Let me tell you the truth. Every time you make a choice against God, this same thing in Isaiah 14, 15 happens to you. You are being brought down. You are descending into destruction. You are going away from light, away from life and all of that. No matter how small that decision is, do what God wants. Forget what you think. You don't have the blueprint. You can't see tomorrow. You are not in control of this entire universe. God who made the universe, God who made man, God who sees tomorrow, God who understands the intricacies of life beyond what you can ever know in this life and in the life to come, beyond what your brain can conceive, that God who made all these things sat down and he put his will in the Bible. And he says, if a man will follow judiciously my word, that person is guaranteed a good life. But man that is limited in wisdom, man that is limited in sight, man that is limited in everything you can think about, chooses to do what he or she wants to do. The end can never be well. You know, when you want to do something, you have to look at people who have gone ahead of you and done that thing and see the end of that particular decision they took. For instance, if you want to be an armed robber, just sit down and say, "Hmm, let me look at 10 armed robbers. Let's see the end of their life. And that will help you making a choice. If you want to be a godly man, you want to be a hardworking person at work or whatever, just sit down and say, hmm, let me take a look at the end of these people's lives and then it will help you to make a decision. So look at the example of the one that chose, decided to walk against God. See how he ended. He's hated by the whole world and look at where he's going to end up in hellfire along with people who choose to be like him. Why can't you say from today? I choose to follow the word of God. What I think does not matter. How I feel does not matter because I'm limited. I don't even know what will happen the next second. But the person who knows what will happen the next year and the 10 million years later is giving me an instruction. Should I follow what I, who cannot see the next second, want to do? Or should I follow what God, who sees up until eternity, knows who should I follow? Obviously, you should follow God. I encourage you to be dedicated to following the will of God, irrespective of how you think. Choose the ways of the Lord and you will never regret it, not in time and not in eternity. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks. From Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram 
YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyex Alfred. Oh,